Next up, we're going to talk about how you can extract and rearrange rows in your data frame. So we just talked about how you can subset based on columns. Now we'll talk about that other dimension of data frames. We're going to go over four different functions in this video, and I'll go into each in depth, but they're all different ways that we can pull out part of the rows in your original data frame. Uh, we'll go through slice, slice sample, arrange, and filter. So one of these we've already covered in the lectures for the last chapter, that's the slice function. As a reminder, this lets you extract certain rows from your data frame based on the positions there. So you really are pulling out just a certain part of your data frame in terms of the rows based on the first through the fifth row, for example. So we can take a look at how to do that. And we'll use again that uh, daily show data set that we've set up in some of the previous slides. So if you've been watching these slides through and trying it out yourself, you probably already have this loaded, but if not, you could pull the code from those previous slides, and if you saved it in a script and highlight the whole thing and run it, then everything should be set up and you can come and check by running the function, excuse me, uh, calling that object name. And we can see that that is set up. So we can come in, and for slice, the first argument is going to be the data frame. And in this case, we've got daily show that we'd like to use. And then we just say the positions that we want to pull. So if we wanted to pull the second and fifth rows, we can put that in with a vector for position two and position five. When I run that, you can see down here that it's pulled out just those two specific rows. Next, you might want to sample a few rows from your data frame. This is especially helpful if you just read in your data and it has a lot of rows. This gives you the chance to pull out a sample and make sure you've got a good feel for what data looks like throughout your data frame, not just right at the beginning. So what this does, this is kind of like sample that we've been using to assign uh, the order in your groups in the in-class exercise. Sample will take a random sample and you tell it with this n argument how many rows you want to sample. So in this example, we're sampling just two. Let's go over and we will do a slice sample. Our data, again, is daily show. That's the first argument we put in for all of the functions that we'll be covering um, in, in this particular video lecture. And then we can say how many we want. And this time, let's try maybe six. So if we then run that, you can come down and you can see that it has picked out six randomly throughout the data frame. Now, again, this is one of those ones that draws on some randomization. So if we run it again, we're going to get a different set. And when you ran it, you likely got a different set than what I showed here. So I just ran it again, and you can see down here that we indeed have a different set of, of rows that it's pulled out. The next isn't slicing out a piece. Instead, it's rearranging the order of your rows. So a lot of times you might have a data frame and you want to put them in order based on one of the fields that you have. So you can use a range to do this. You first will put in the data frame and then you put in the name of the column for which you want to use that field to arrange them. If that column is a character data type, then it will do it alphabetically. If it's a numeric, then it will do it by the numerical value. So let's take a look at that. We'll do a range. Again, the first argument is going to be the name of the object for our, our data frame that we want to look at. And then we can pick. Maybe we would like to take a look at this group and see things in that order. So we can put in group. And then when we run this, if you look, you'll see our first few rows that it's showing now are all ones where group is very close to the beginning of the alphabet. So these all start with A. They're all different academics who came on the daily show. Now you might want this order flipped. You might want to start with Z instead. And so what you can do for that is you can do DESC. That stands for descending. So if we run that, now we'll see that it's with groups for science. So it's ones near the end of the alphabet. This can be really helpful because sometimes you want to get a subset that's just the first few values for something. 
So we can run this and then follow it with slice to pull out just those top values. So I've shown an example here where it's first using a range to pick out um, the, the, sorry, to rearrange the rows in terms of the category column. It's going to do it alphabetically since that's a character. And then next we'll use slice to pull out just the first three of those. So we can take a look over here at that as well. And we'll go back and take out the descending and have this just be group. So in this case, I'm going to assign that. Again, that means that instead of just printing out these changes that we've made, it will overwrite the original uh, daily show. Oh. I did not spell that correctly. There we go. It'll overwrite that original object with the output from this, and that's what we'll have to work with in that daily show object from now on. So I'll run that, and then I can come down and I can do slice now with that same that same um, object, and then I can say that I want the first three rows. And you can see it's first ordered them, and then it has pulled out the three rows that I wanted. So this is just that note again that we can do it with descending if we would prefer to get things um, in the opposite order from the default with R. I'm showing this here with alphabetical. Typically, this isn't the way that we'll do it. Often, we will use this arrange more with numeric columns, but in this case, we don't have any numeric columns yet. Later, we'll change the date into a date class, and then we can work with that in the same way. But for right now, all of ours are in a character class, so that's why I'm showing that as the example. Okay, now we're going to move into things that you've got to think a little bit more about when you're doing them, but they give you a lot more power to pull things out. We're going to work with a function called filter. This, again, will take our full data frame and limit it to just a subset in terms of the numbers of rows. But instead of us saying which rows we want by position like we did with slice, in this case, we're going to use logic. So we can say we only want ones that meet certain characteristics. The syntax we'll use for this is we'll first put in the data frame just like we've been doing for the other functions, but then we'll put in what's called a logical expression. We'll be doing a lot more over the class with these logical expressions, but this is your first introduction to them. So this logical expression lets you give the condition that the row needs to meet to be included in the subset that you're pulling out with filter. So for example, you might want to take this large data frame you have and you might want to pull out only the rows from 2015 from that specific year or only the rows where a guest was in that category of academic or maybe even only the ones where um, a certain value was missing, like the job wasn't stated. Filter with logical expressions will let you do all of that. So it's very powerful in terms of, of getting down to a subset of your original data. So here's an example. In this case, we're using a logical operator, the double equal sign, that's testing if two things are equal. So this is saying, is the category column equal to science? And if it is, it will keep those rows. And if it's not, it will get rid of them. So we can look at that. We'll do filter. Again, we start with data. And it's that daily show. And then in this case, we want, and I think I've named these differently. I think I named them category in the slides. And as I was coding here, I've named them group. But we, we first put the name of the column that we're checking to see if it meets that condition. And then we want to see if it's exactly equal to that character string, and I'll have to spell this correctly, of science. So when we run this, you can see now when we were working with this before, actually, let me run the full daily show again. So the full daily show, we can look down here. It's got over 2,500 columns. When we do filter, we're getting down just to 28. So it's clearly um, pulled out just a small subset of our total number of columns. And then this might be a separate data frame that we want to work with later by itself. So if we want to, we can assign this its own name. So in this case, I can assign it to scientist. And then we run it, and again, if we call that object, we can see that it's printed out that same thing. As I mentioned, we'll be working a lot in this class on logical operators, but here's a start. Here are some of the common ones that you'll see. We just use this double equals, and that means that something has to be exactly equal to one other thing, one and only one other thing. So we could look and see, 
if a column named category was exactly equal to acting. On the other hand, we can do a bang equal. So a lot of times in uh, programming, we'll refer to an exclamation point as a bang. So this exclamation point in a lot of logical operators will negate everything else you were saying. So instead of this being equal, now it's going to be not equal. So if we use that operator and put it between our column name and then a string, then this is saying that we are looking for the cases where the category is anything but comedy. And I'm realizing as I look at this, I need another quotation mark over here. I have a typo. I'll fix that. But this would need a closing quotation mark around the character string to run correctly. So when we looked at the double equals, that's letting us see if it matches one and only one value. But a lot of times we want to see if it's any of a few values. The double equals sign won't get us there without a lot of kind of like extra coding. What we can use is an in operator. The meaning of this is that it, it has a value that's in a set that we give it of other values. So if we wanted to filter to all of the rows where the job was either academic or science, then we could specify category. And instead of the double equals, in this case, we could say that it's in. And then we give it a vector of all of the things that it could match. So if the category is exactly equal to academic or if the category is exactly equal to science, it will keep those rows and everything else that we get rid of. There's also a special operator if you're looking for missing values. So you can't do that something and the double equal sign is NA because that NA has some special characteristics to it. So instead, if you are looking for the columns that are missing, the, the excuse me, the rows where a certain column has missing values, you need to use this is.na. So this is saying to look and filter down just to the rows where the job column has a missing value is an A. We can also use some operators to join these together. So, so far we've been looking at kind of single ones that you've run, but we can set it up so it has to meet a few conditions or so it could meet either of one of two conditions and then we keep it. The ampersand we use for and, so there you can see we've got logical expressions on either side of that ampersand and for the whole thing to evaluate to true, to evaluate to the point where we keep that row, the row has to meet both those conditions. So this would pull out only row, only rows where the year is 2015 and the category column is academic. The other one along these lines is this pipe operator, and that stands for or. So in this case, it will pull out any row where either of these conditions are met. Either the year was 2015 or the category was academic. And of course, it will also pull the ones that meet both of those conditions. We'll be covering these in depth next week. This is just a preview as we start to work with the data. But as another preview, it will check each element of a vector against each corresponding element of another vector to see if it's equal. And then the result turns out to be what we call a logical vector. This has a special data type called a logical data type, and that can only take two values. It can only be true or false. And you'll see down here that those do not have quotation marks around them. They have this special meaning. They aren't character strings. It's a true or a false value. So we'll be able to go through and test um, the, these expressions. And then we'll get out a vector that looks like this, where it's the same length as what we were testing in the first place. But each position will give a true if that was true. So in this case, the first value is indeed equal in these two. And so that first position evaluates to true. But then for any places where it is not a true, it, it, where it evaluates as something other than true, we'll get a false in the logical vector. So you can see here that at third position, three is not equal to four. And so in the logical vector that we get out, that third position has evaluated to false.